Hey everyone, I'm Brandon from Nagios and welcome back to the channel. Today I got a jump start for you for Nagios Network Analyzer so that you can start monitoring your network traffic quickly. In today's video, we'll be covering the final installation process for setting up Network Analyzer. We'll be also be going through setting up our very first switch, assembling our first report, as well as setting up alerting. If you want to learn how to integrate Nagios Network Analyzer with Nagios XI, please check out the description below. This video will be longer than normal, so let's just get started. The installation method I decided to use was manual install on a Linux box. There are various ways to install Network Analyzer. For more information on that and a link to a video, please check out the description below. Since I chose a manual method after the installation process, we are shown an IP address. With our desired web browser, we are going to navigate to this IP address. You can either select a 30-day free trial, or if you already have a key, you can go ahead and paste that in here. For our username, for the sake of this example, we will leave it as Nagios Admin. You will want to set up a username and password that best suits your environment. You're also going to go ahead and throw in an email address. It does not matter which one you decide to use. And then please also select your desired language as well as your time zone. Once you're satisfied with your settings, you can click Finish Installation. Once the installation process is finished, we will go ahead and log in here. Upon logging in, we are met with absolutely nothing. So this is a brand new, fresh install of Network Analyzer. The first thing that we're gonna do is set up our very first switch so that we can start receiving S-Flow or NetFlow data. To begin the process, we'll go to the top here and select Sources, and we'll click Create Source. Now, before I continue, I want to mention that you need to make sure that your switches or router, depending on what you are monitoring, is emitting NetFlow or S-Flow. To start, we'll go ahead and put in our source name. I want to point out that the source name must be unique and it cannot be changed later on. So for the sake of this example, I will call it the Aruba switch, since that is the type of switch I will be putting in here. You also need to put in the sender IP address. Then we will enter in the IP address as well as our port right here. We need to select our incoming flow type, whether it be NetFlow or SFlow. Again, I want to point out that this flow type cannot be changed once we create our source. And finally, we need to select our raw data lifetime. This is how long Network Analyzer will hold on to data. We recommend that you go no more than 24 hours to preserve disk space. Once we're satisfied with these settings, we can click Create Source. And as you can see, our Aruba switch has populated. And if we click it, there's no data available. It hasn't been in Network Analyzer long enough for any data to accumulate in here. I'm going to switch over to a Network Analyzer instance that I've had running for a handful of days. It'll have the exact same switch that we just entered in. This is what your Network Analyzer will look like after it's been running for some time and it has had the opportunity to be able to collect that S-Flow data that the, your switch is emitting. So once we click on our switch here, we are met with a logarithmic graph, which is going over the bandwidth of our switch. This can be modified with the timestamp off to the right. We can look at the last two hours, four hours, all the way up to two days in the last month, depending on how long you set your raw data lifetime to be set for. You can also use your cursor and highlight certain areas of the graph. And it'll zoom in and you can have a little bit more detailed look into your bandwidth. And as you can see right here at the bottom, we have a report here that's been run by default with our top talking IPs. Before we move into reports, I want to point out our source groups function. Now in this source groups function, we can bulk in multiple switches or routers into one area. Say we have them in the same rack or in the same server room. This just adds an extra layer of organization for your flow sources. 
So we can click create source groups. We can name it our HQ server room. And if we had multiple switches and routers in here, we would scroll through this list and select which one would go into the source group. So we only have the one. So it would just be the Aruba switch in there. Again, this just adds an extra layer of organization and also helps you maintain multiple switches into one area. And if you had wanted to create the source group, you could just click create source group. And now you would have it in here and you would see multiple switches in here as well. All right, let's get into reports. By default, we have four reports that can be ran at a given time. We can also click create a report for our own type of reporting. So for I'm going to run one of our default reports. This will be the top five talkers by destination IP. On the far right side, we can click this run button here. We can select our source. The only source that we have is the Aruba switch. And here you can select your source group if you wanted to look at your bulk groups that you added earlier. You can click run report and you will be met with some data. You'll be met with a pie chart and some data in a table below. Now going back to reports, we're going to go ahead and create our own report. So I'm switching back to reports and I will click create report. And we're going to look, create a report that shows the top 10 bytes over the last 24 hours. We're going to give it a, a name that contains that information so that it is easily visible. So we will go top 10 bytes and it will be by the destination IP. And again, we will go over the last 24 hours, like so. Again, we're displaying the top 10, so we'll display the top 10 in this box here. This is where we'll set our time range. Uh, we'll do 24 hours, and we will be grouping it by destination IP. And we're going to be looking for bytes. Now, in this video, I won't be going over the limiter option here. If you want to learn more about that, we'll put a link in the description below so that you can see what that looks like. This is our report here, so we'll click Save. And as you can see, our report has appeared at the bottom. On the far right side, we are met with a Run, Edit, and Delete. We will click Run. Again, selecting our Aruba switch, or if you want to select a source group, you can select that here as well. We will click Run Report, and here is our report. It has a mixture of IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. If you wanted to fix that, that would be that limiter option that I'm not going to go over in this video. Again, we will have a link in the description below going over the limiter feature. Before we continue to alerting, again, I want to mention that I will not be going over how to integrate Nagios Network Analyzer with Nagios XI. For information on that, we will have a link in the description below. At the top, we were going to select alerting. And I want to point out again that there are multiple different ways you can do alerts. We won't be covering them all in this video. We'll just be going over creating a basic check and just setting up email alerts. So at the top, we will select new check and we'll give it a random name. So we will just call this one abnormal activity. We will again select our Source, the Aruba switch will be our source. If you want to do a source group, you could select that here or a route node as well. And for our view, we will just do a no view because that's the only option we can select. And then we will go on to step two. In step two, we are going to be looking for abnormal behavior. Abnormal behavior basically will alert us to any higher than normal traffic during a given period of time. And finally, step three is our alerting method. Again, there are a couple different ways you can alert. It would be email, Nagios. You can also do an SNMP trap and set up a custom command. In this video, I'll only be going over setting up email for users. Again, we will have a link in the description below which will cover uh, using the Nagios XI and SNMP trap and setting up your own custom commands. If we had more users created within this network analyzer instance, there would be a list of names below Nagios admin. All of them would have their own email address and password in them. This is where you would select which users you want to alert to the abnormal behavior. Since I only have the Nagios admin user in here, we'll just select this user and click finish and save. And then as you can see here, our check has been created.
On the right side, there is a view slash edit button where you can view your check or make any changes that you may need. The only thing you can't change is its name, but you will be able to change it from an abnormal behavior to flow, bits per second, packets, bytes, whatever you want it to be. This is where you edit would edit it. However, you cannot change its name. And that wraps up our Network Analyzer Jumpstart, folks. I hope you found this video useful. Please don't forget to check out the description below for any of the things that I didn't cover in this video. We'll have links to those below. Also, if you have any other questions, please visit support.nagios.com for some more great documentation. And don't forget to stop by our YouTube channel for some more amazing content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.